Welcome to this Precision Labs presentation on Ethernet. In this session, we'll spend a few minutes looking at Ethernet physical layer transceivers, also called PHIs. In this video, we'll cover the following topics. How a PHI is connected in a typical application circuit, a breakdown of the PHI into common subfunctions, and the capabilities of each subfunction. This diagram shows a basic system-level implementation of an Ethernet physical layer connection. The PHI sits between the Media Access Control Layer Device, or MAC, and the network connection. The MAC device can be either a microcontroller, processor, FPGA, or Ethernet switch. The connection to the MAC layer is called the Media Independent Interface, or MII. Different versions of this interface are defined in the IEEE 802.3 standard and offer either reduced number of signal lines, higher data speeds, or both. The supported data speeds are 10, 100, 1000 megabits per second, and higher. The term XMII is used to collectively refer to multiple versions of the MAC interface. To support the higher speeds while easing clock requirements, multiple data lanes may be used. The MAC interface may also include transmit and receive clocks and other status signals, again depending on the version. There may also be another connection between the PHI and the MAC device, what we show as SMI in the diagram, which stands for Station Management Interface. This is a two-wire communications port specified in the IEEE 802.3 standard that allows a system controller or the MAC to manage the PHI by accessing its eternal registers. The PHI's network connection is called the Media Dependent Interface, or MDI. Unlike the MII, the signaling characteristics of the MDI depends on the nature of the physical channel, which could be either copper or fiber. The PHI usually provides general purpose input output pins, or GPIO, which typically can be used to either drive status LEDs or to provide access to other internal signals. When used as LED drivers, they can give you visual indications of link conditions such as speed or status. The PHI requires an external clock source which can be used as a 25 MHz crystal or a 15 MHz clock supplied from another device. Both of these must meet a minimum frequency accuracy of plus minus 100 ppm, accounting for all error sources. Some of the details on clocking, XMII, SMI, and MDI will be covered in other Precision Lab sessions about Ethernet. The IEEE 802.3 standard defines three major functional blocks or sublayers that make up the PHI. These layers are the physical coding sublayer or PCS. The primary function of the PCS is to encode and decode data. For example, in a 100 base TX, four bits of data received from the MAC interface to be transmitted over the network are encoded to a five bit block code. Hence, the actual data rate transmitted over the channel becomes 125 megabits per second. The use of block codes helps with clock recovery at the receiver and provides additional codes that are used for link management. The physical medium attachment sublayer, or PMA, provides functions for bit to symbol mapping, determining link status, clock recovery, and detecting error events. The physical medium dependent sublayer, or PMD, implements the functions that support the PHI's physical connection to the network, whether it is copper or fiber. Each layer contains both transmit and receive paths. The PCS block is responsible for receiving data from and transmitting data to the MAC. While the PMA function is always present in the PHI, the PMD may not be. This is determined by the versions of the Ethernet standard supported by the MAC. In some versions of the standard, the PMD functions are included in the PMA. Regardless, these blocks are the interface to the physical medium and they provide services that convert electrical or optical signals to bits in the receive path and bits to electrical or optical signals in the transmit path. Though the diagram here shows separate transmit and receive channels in the physical medium, the physical medium may actually be shared between RX and TX. In this case, hybrid and echo canceling functions hosted in the PMA PMD allow the PHI to successfully receive data over the link at the same time it is transmitting. Finally, the physical medium may consist of multiple parallel physical channels that enable the transmission and reception of data at higher rates. For example, 1000 base T uses four twisted pair channels, A, B, C, and D, each supporting 250 megabits per second to achieve a total data rate of one gigabit per second. The physical coding sublayer, or PCS, provides different services to the MAC layer and PMA. It is primarily responsible for encoding and decoding data passed over the link. The PCS exchanges transmit and receive data and other control signals from the MAC layer through the XMII interface. 
the widths of the transmit and receive data paths between the phi and the MAC here, labeled as TXD, N0, and RXD, N0, may have values of 1, 2, 4, or 8 bits, depending on the total data speed. The PCS also contains functions that monitor both the transmit and receive paths to determine when the network interface is active, and, if there are collisions, signal the MAC layer the occurrence of a collision using the COL signal. It supports low power mode, if implemented, by processing idle code groups. The receive path of the PCS takes in data from the PMA interface and basically reverses the processing that the PCS in the sending node applied to the data. It decodes the received code groups to the original packet bits. Based on either the success or failure of proper data decode and recovery, the receive block will either assert an RxDV signal to indicate it is forwarding valid data to the MAC, or assert an RxER signal to indicate it has detected an error in the data. The PHI's clock recovery function is used to synchronize its receiver bit clock to the transmitting PHI's bit clock. This is vital to understand when performing loop pack testing. If all is decoded and coded properly, the same number of receive and transmitted packets should be the same with no errors. In some versions of IEEE 802.3 standard, additional scrambling is applied to the data. The main function of the Physical Medium Attachment Sublayer, or PMA, is to convert the encoded transmit bitstream from the PCS sublayer to the appropriate data symbol for transmission on the network medium, and convert incoming data symbols from the network into bits that are then passed to the PCS sublayer. The PMA sublayer also performs carrier detection by looking for a link transition from the idle state in the received bitstream, RxK. When this transition is detected, it then looks for the start of stream delimiter, SSD. Once the latter is detected, it indicates carrier detection to the PCS sublayer. It also monitors the signal status reported by the PMD sublayer if present. If the auto negotiation capability has been implemented in the PHI, the PMA sublayer will coordinate with the latter and set the link status indication to the appropriate value pending the state of auto negotiation and pass this to the PCS. Otherwise, it sets the link status according to the signal status indicated by the PMD. If the PHI does not support auto negotiation, it may instead include an optional far end fault detect capability. If the PHI detects a physical error condition in the receive channel, it will generate a fault indication and insert this in the TX channel stream. If it receives a far end fault indication in the RX channel, which is a special symbol pattern, it will begin transmitting an idle symbol pattern to insist with reestablish of normal communications. Note that far end fault detect is not supported if the PHI is capable of auto negotiation. Some optional functionality that the PMA performs also include generating indications and carrier errors from the PMD if present, and sensing received channel failures, then transmitting or detecting far end fault indication. This is useful for any debugging on the PHI. Proper functioning of the PMA is important as it needs to pass compliant tests. Finally, note that for versions of the standard that use multiple twisted pairs, such as 1000 base T, there will be a 1 to n mapping of the symbol stream. For example, 1000 pays t uses four twisted pair, designated as channels A, B, C, and D. The physical medium dependent sublayer, or PMD, if implemented in the PHI, is primarily responsible for converting the TX symbols to the appropriate physical signals used for the network medium. It also converts the received path signals to RX symbols in the received path. The PMD may not always be part of the PHI. The use of the PMD is defined by the specific version of the standard implemented by the PHI. The standard defines systems that accommodate certain mediums and types of cabling. In some amendments to IEEE 802.3 standard, for example, IEEE 802.3BW, which is also called 100 base T1, the PMD is not defined because only single twisted pair copper is supported. In this case, the PMA handles the task of conversion between symbols and signaling. This is also true for 1000 base T. 1000 base TX defines PMD functionality, but 1000 base T does not. The PMD is useful for debugging the medium as it is the physical layer responsible for interfacing to the physical media. Considering the only network interfaces that use twisted pair copper for the moment, the electrical format of the signaling is differential. Some examples of the types of signaling used include 100 base TX using MLT3, 1000 base T using PAM5, and 100 base T1 using PAM3. Examples of MLT3 and PAM5 are shown here as ideal signals. 
The symbol values illustrated here are relative values, not actual voltage levels, which are defined in the respective IEEE 802.3 amendments. The actual voltages are also a differential value. For example, V diff of T is equal to Tx positive minus Tx negative. More information and details on the different types of fixed signaling will be explained in future videos. If the network uses copper cable, the differential signals are usually driven into a twisted pair differential impedance of 100 ohms. The IEEE 802.3 specification clauses listed here contain details on the PCS, PMA, and PMD functions in the PHI, broken down by link speed. As used here, the notation of 100 base X represents both copper, 100 base TX, and fiber, 100 base FX, versions of the 100 megabits per second specification. The PCS and PMA functions are identical for either copper or fiber, because they are medium independent and are described in section 2, clause 24 of the standard. Because the PMD depends on the physical medium, the copper and fiber versions are described in different clauses, clause 25 for copper and clause 26 for fiber. Section 3 of IEEE 802.3 covers the various versions of 1 gigabit per second Ethernet. 1000 base T is described in clause 40, while long and short wavelength fiber versions, as well as short haul copper, are described in clauses 36 through 39. Thank you for viewing this Precision Lab session on Ethernet physical layer transceivers. To find more Ethernet technical resources and to search TI's portfolio of Ethernet PHI products, visit ti.com/ethernet.